Coming up on Undisputed, Kevin Durant went after the media yesterday. Was he out of line for his tirade? And we'll also discuss all the latest Anthony Davis trade rumors. Plus, Var Ball is in studio with us. We will ask him if Lonzo will still be a Laker at the end of the day. I'm bracing myself for that one. Undisputed coming up next. Jenna, back to you. As well you should, Jenny. As well, you should. <laughs> that was well done. Uh, time for us to go viral. No one was having more fun than the Nets bench last night in their big win against the Nuggets, but they might have met their match with the Warriors bench losing their minds on this Andre Iguodala corner three. Woo! This was really cool. He shoots it and looks behind it. Now, Steph Curry would typically do something like that. Now, Draymond just wishes he can get his ball to go in. <laughs> that's why he's excited. But watch Iggy. He shoots it. Catch that. Oh, yeah. He does the pre-celebration oh, yeah. celebration. Th that's Steph invented that. Yeah, well, that, these are the kind of things you have to do when you're on the Warriors. Make sure you keep the season fun, light. Man, the, the Spurs are 32-24. and 24. They've got one of the 10 best records in all of basketball. Lose Kawhi Leonard, no problem. Rinse, repeat, going to be there. And they get beat by 40 last night because the Warriors are fully functional during the game. Now, after the game, things a little bit different for Not them right now. Not as functional after the game. No, they're having fun, man. Not as functional. All right, let's talk about why they are not as functional. They crushed the Spurs, yes, by the aforementioned almost 40 points last night, 39. But that turned out to be a footnote to the bigger story, and that's Kevin Durant, his post-game press conference. The first one he's agreed to do in eight days. It lasted only three and a half minutes. Took a turn for the worse when he was peppered with questions about his impending free agency. Take a listen to Kevin Durant. But we've noticed that you hadn't talked for a while. Um, is it anything to do with anything on your mind, or has it just been coincidence that you haven't talked for some time? Why do you care? Because you usually talk. Oh, well, I, feel like, I ain't feel like talking the last couple of days. It was anything in particular? No, I just ain't feel like it. Has anything to do with conversation about free agency? Yeah, that's the conversation you're going to have. I don't think about that type of stuff. That's your job. You've obviously been around the noise for so long. Is it bothering you more this year? Is it louder this year? It's unnecessary. You got a dude, Ethan Strauss, who come in here and <clears throat> just give his whole opinion on stuff and make it seem like it's coming from me. And he just walk around here, don't talk to nobody, just walk in here and survey and then write something like that. And now y'all piling on me because I don't want to talk to y'all about that. I have nothing to do with the Knicks. I don't know who traded Porzingis. They got nothing to do with me. I'm trying to play basketball. Y'all come here every day, ask me about free agency, ask my teammates, my coaches. You rile up the fans about it. Y'all let us play basketball. That's all I'm saying. And now when I don't want to talk to y'all, it's a problem with me. Come on, man. Grow up. Grow up. Yeah, you, grow up. Come on, bro. I come in here and go to work every day. I don't cause no problems. I play the right way. Well, I try to play the right way. I try to be the best player I can be every possession. What's the problem? What am I doing to y'all? We're talking. We're talking. Yeah. So, who are you? Why do I got to talk to you? Tell me. Does that, is that going to help me do my job better? Nah, bro. I didn't feel like talking. I mean, how do you how how are you playing? How's the team playing in the last I, couple weeks? I'm done. You know you don't care about that. I just asked you. All right, Nick. What was your reaction to all of that? All right. First, let me give a little context because he's yes, Kevin Durant hasn't talked and he hasn't talked since Chris Stapps got traded. But he's reacting to an article written by Ethan Strauss, an article that talks about his pending free agency, the belief that he's going to New York, and has a section in there about Durant's own personal frustration with not being considered the best player in the world. And that's that's what he's lashing out at. Let me just let the audience know who Ethan is. I don't know him personally. He and I actually have had a kind of back and forth that wasn't necessarily the most positive on Twitter back in the day, but he is a great reporter. He's a reporter that when he got laid off by ESPN, Steve Kerr did a press conference talking mm -hmm. about what an outrage he thought this guy it was that this guy got laid off. The Athletic then scooped him up. He's, co he's covered this team longer than Katie's been on this team. I only say that, not just media defending media, because he's not making things up. Okay, Kevin Durant's not lashing out at, at, at anonymously sourced mm -hmm. bogus reporting. Right. Kevin Durant's upset at two things. One, that people are speculating, informed speculation, 
that he and his business partner, Rich Kleinman, are setting up shop and getting ready to set up shop in New York City. And two, that people are reporting, informed reporting, that Kevin Durant has expressed to people close to him how frustrated he is that he went to Golden State not only to win rings, but because he thought winning a ring was the only reason, having not won a ring was the only reason he was not considered the best player in the world. He won. And I would have thought that too. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you would have told me two years ago, he's going to go to Golden State. They're going to win back to back. He's going to be MVP of the finals. i am like, oh, okay, we have moved over. Right. Hey, he's the best player in the world and, now. And in this fashion, in LeBron's face in game three, two years ago, and then again in game three last year. Not in LeBron's face, but the biggest shot of the series. And yet, what happened was LeBron, two years ago, elevated his game in the playoffs to a whole new level. Last year was a level the likes of which we've never seen. And so he didn't get that, and that kills him. That is not me guessing. That is as informed as I can be on that without being inside Kevin Durant's head. And so he is lashing out to those two different things, but what he is saying, see, is illogical. Part of the reason the NBA is so popular 11 and a half months a year is because people care about the transaction more than they care about the regular season. Yes. And now that there's not a bunch of suspense, thanks to how good Durant and the Warriors are for the playoffs, people, you know, the most interesting thing about the 2018-19 season is what the 2019-20 season is going to look like because while Kevin Durant's not considered the best player in the league, he right now is the most powerful because if he chooses not to leave, everything everyone else is doing is kind of meaningless. If he stays there, then we know how next season's going to end as well. I don't know why it makes him so angry. I don't know why he, he has to know that, of course, you can't just go to work, go home, not talk. He has to know that this is no, part of- No, no, I don't believe he knows that. Okay. I mean, he doesn't realize that there is a, a partnership between the player, the media, and the fans, because you can't reach all your fans on your own social media. There's a reason why they sell, sell all these tennis shoes internationally. You know the reason why? Because the game of NBA basketball, which is the best basketball in the world, because it's they market it. Game. So all these guys are benefiting, but none, nothing impacted where we are in the NBA right now more than that guy making the decision after being ahead three to one. Losing to the Golden State Warriors. That's the number one reason why we're in this spot. Mm -hmm. And then he doubled down on that and said, I'm going to join them. So you can blame yourself because the optics on the NBA, no, they're not about the game. We can't care about you beating San Antonio, a playoff team, a great franchise by 40 last night. You know the reason why, Kevin? Is because you joined the Warriors, and buddy. And did it in a way where you're going to every year have to answer these questions. Because it's been a one plus one, yeah, because a one plus one. Had his if, if, yes. he had, if this offseason, the Warriors desperately wanted him to sign a four-year deal. He could have also said yesterday, hey, man, I'm going to opt in at the end of the season. Right. Like He had that option. And, and by the, he has no obligation to do that. But he does have an obligation just to be aware this is what is the most interesting part of the league right now, the transaction. It is a testament to the Warriors' dominance that that is more, because in 2016, there was speculation about where Durant might go, right? Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, LeBron was on a one plus one. There's speculation, would he, if they could win the Warriors on their way to 73 wins, would he leave Cleveland again? But it wasn't deafening because we thought OKC could get their first title. Would the Warriors win mm -hmm. back to back? Could LeBron win his first in Cleveland? And how he was handling it with the local media, that he wasn't going to be discussing it. And he also didn't have a teammate that told him in the middle of the game, why don't you leave right now, compared to wait until the summer. How much of this changes if he comes to New York, though? The media is going to be it, it, as bad, if not worse, as far as at mm -hmm. least wanting to be there every day in his face. Look, there's the, the pressures on you just as much, and it might be a little harder to win. Well, this is where Kevin Durant, and this is where I actually empathize with Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant really does just want to go play basketball. And that part is true. That, he wants to play basketball. When he says, I, he almost, it almost sounded to me childlike when he's like, what, I play basketball the right way. I try to. Like, he, mm -hmm. he, he really, and he's not a bad person. No. Right. He's a good dude, actually. The, the burner accounts don't make you a bad dude. It makes you a little maybe confused. But he's, he's a good guy. He's an incredibly charitable guy. And he really just does want to play basketball. 
But he also for, and this is again, this is not speculation by me, I know this. He since 2013 has believed, damn it, I'm the best in the world at this, why will no one say it? And the people around him, his circle understandably says, you're the best in the world at this, why will no one say it? In 2013 he told Sports Illustrated, I'm sick of being second. I lost LeBron in the finals, second pick of the draft, coming second the MVP every year to LeBron, I'm sick of it. He then won an MVP, it's like, oh, it's my turn? No, it's Steph's turn. And then stays, stayed LeBron's turn. And so he did what he thought, I think he made an uncomfortable decision going to Golden State. Tarnished his personal brand, took more criticism than he'd ever taken because I'm gonna get that ring and everyone's gonna shut up. And now it's 2019 and Ethan Strauss is writing, not only am I second in the league, I'm second to Nike. Nike won't even say I'm number one. And it, he lashed out. But what he said was irrational. Wait, why do you care? What are you talking about? He says, we cut it off part of it. But he says, see, ask me about basketball. If you guys want to talk about basketball, ask me about basketball. Oh, he asked him a good question. The reporter says, how do you feel like you're playing? How's the team playing the last couple of weeks? And then the most honest thing he said the whole time.